Hi, hello everyone. So after a long while, I am again sharing one of the video, and uh, today's video is going to be on capacity planning and work details view using Azure DevOps. So how we can set up the capacity and how we can use the work details view uh, during the sprint planning or uh, as part of an ongoing sprint. So uh, this is going to be a part of Azure DevOps learning series. So let us start. Uh, so as part of today's video, we will be covering this particular uh, topic. So we will understand uh, the sample project that I have created in the Azure DevOps lab. So we will understand uh, that particular project, what kind of project it is, and how we can navigate to the project setup and understand the process that is used in this sample project. Uh, we will also understand how to navigate to the Azure backlog and uh, Azure DevOps sprint view. Uh, we will also understand uh, just for this project purpose, I mean, we have created one week of a sample sprint. So we will just understand how that sprint looks like, that one week of a sprint. And then we will focus on how we can utilize the capacity, how we can set team capacity during a particular sprint using Azure DevOps. And we will also understand how we can add team members in a capacity view. Let's say the, those can, uh, team members are not present, what we can do about it. And finally, how we can use the work details view, which is part of the sprint view during uh, a sprint planning or, or during uh, as part of the ongoing sprint. So we will start it. So to start with, uh, this is our Azure DevOps sample project. The name is the Scrum Project 2024. And if I click on the overview, which is available on the left navigation, so this gives me the details about the project. Uh, like how many work items are there, how many members are there, there are five members, and uh, we can click on the project setting on the left down. And uh, uh, so basically here we can see in the general overview, we can see the name of the project and we can also find out what kind of process it is used. So it is using the agile process. So if I click on this particular process, so what it tells is, uh, these are the work item types which is available on this particular project. So that means, you know, we can, uh, we can use the epic, we can also have a feature type available, we can also have a user story. So uh, now what we will do is uh, we will go back to the this particular project and uh, let's go to the backlog. So this is how we can navigate to the backlog. So if I bring the mouse to the board and click on the backlog, so this gives me what all is available. So this is giving me the list of all the stories. Okay, and I can also choose the epic. So we have these six epics which are created in this particular uh, project. And if I click on expand this particular epic, it gives me, okay, user management epic consists of this feature and the user login feature consists of these stories. So this is how the structure is. And from this particular drop down, I can always see, okay, what all epics are available, what all features are available. So this is how it is configured. So the backlog in terms of epic features and stories, they have already been created. And if I go to the sprint, so this is how the sample sprint is there. Uh, we can we can click on the planning and uh, we can just remove the filters. So if I go here, this is my view options. So I can always click on the planning. So this gives me the planning view. So just for our this particular video and understanding purpose, I have created one sprint, which is like a one week of a sprint, which starts from today and it will end on 27th of uh, December. Then there is going to be another sprint too, which starts from the next day and it will uh, again, the, you know, it is going to be a one week. So what we have done in this particular project is, I mean, we have tagged these four stories. So they are, uh, this is, this is uh, showing it here. We have four stories in this sprint one. And if I uh, can show you guys, uh, uh, okay. So we are not having the story point. So what we can do is we can click on the column options and we can say add a column and we can say show us the story points on the view. Okay, so now we can see we have the story point. So in terms of story point, we have three, two, one, and three. Okay, so it's uh, total effort is nine, right? So it is showing us, you know, there is a total planned effort that, that is of nine story points, three and two, five, one, six, and three, nine. And then 14 is the count of tasks. 
so this is how we can understand like what it tells us it tells us our sprint one has been started from today 21st of december it will last till totally 7th of december it's a five working days of sprint our total planned effort in terms of story point is nine which we have just you know uh have checked here we have four stories planned and we have 14 tasks right we can also check the count of tasks by using the filter if i just select you know give me just the task so we can see you know these are the tasks we have right so we have five up to db changes and then another five up to unit tests that means 10 and then rest of the four so it becomes 14. now uh what we want to do is let's say this particular team is uh in a planning session and so they have pulled these four stories and uh you know so basically as part of the sprint planning we also have to come up with a you know understand the priorities from the bo what all work a team can take up so let's say these were the priority items now team has included them in the sprint backlog they have also done the estimates and uh, because this team is pretty new they have also done pretty detailed estimates so that means you know they have also come up with the task of the stories uh, that you know what all it will take to complete these stories. So let's say for forgot username, they have the UI task, they have the API, they have the DP changes, they have review and closer, and then they have the unit test. And they have also estimated these tasks. So if I click on this particular forgot username task, so it tells me, okay, this is my original estimate. And now it's still because the work has not started, the team is doing the planning. So still we have 10 hours remaining, right? So this is how they have as part, as part of, you know, planning, uh, they have included the story the stories have been estimated in the story points and they have also listed what all takes to implement that user story in terms of tasks so when when a team is working on agile scrum it's not necessary to list all the tasks during the planning so it's okay if a team adds a new task right i mean the, all the idea is that you know uh, do we have enough details so that we can commit to the plan so that's the particular uh, that's the idea about you know coming up with the estimates and maybe you know coming up with the task that we know at that particular moment and we can say okay yeah this is this story is going to take this many hours right but i mean as a process it does not say that you know do not include any task in between the sprint we can definitely add it because our commitment during the sprint is at a story level not at a task level so now uh, after understanding these details we can just you know uh, we can have the filter off now what we can do is uh, in order to set the capacity which is the main topic of this particular video we will have to click on the capacity and as we can see uh, that we know we have just one user which is the prime user creative learning made simple and we do not have other users so how we can add the other members so we will have to click on the add users so here we can say like let's say anil is there so i click on ok and then say save I can add another one, I can say Rajiv, and then OK, I can save it here. And who else is part of this team? We have this person, so I say save. So let's say this is kind of a very short team, and uh, just you know, for our understanding purpose, let's say this four members team is working on one week of sprint, right? So, um, I mean, this is how we will add the users. Now, in order to define the capacity, we will have to understand how many hours per day these members are working. So uh, it's not necessary all the members will be working the same hours, but just to keep it simple, we will say, okay, each person is kind of like actively working uh, six hours per day. So we will say six, six hours and, uh, uh, you know, remaining time goes in the meeting, some other, uh, you know, uh, kind of a buffer we can say for the extra things, but I mean, six hours is the productivity uh, that we take into account. Now, if I save it, so it defines that in a one week, uh, so that means, you know, this person, it has five days available because it's one week of a sprint. So that means uh, we have uh, 30 hours for him. So let us, let us check because it's a five work days, right? So work days are five and the person is working six hours per day. So it becomes 30, 30, 30. Now, if I go to the backlog and uh, there is one view, uh, which is the main topic of uh, today's video. So what we can do is we click on the view options and we click on the work details. So basically it will tell us like for each person, how much work is available, right? So, uh, so work by assigned to, right? So like Anil also has, uh, okay. So each of the person we can see like, you know, this particular user has 30 hours, this particular user creative learning has 30 hours. This also has 30 hours because that's the capacity we have set during the 
planning and they are doing the planning just now right and uh, you will ask this question like what is this uh, 120 so 120 hours is the total hours uh, total available hours of this particular team like if i go back and if we see this person has 30 hours this person has 30 hours this person has 30 hours so it becomes 30 into 4 that means 120 hours so team has 120 hours available in their uh, kitty and what is 134 so 134 is the total uh, total work that they have planned in hours you know so we have 40 and 20 that becomes 60 and 60 and 36 becomes 96 and 96 and 38 becomes 134 so that means uh, so this will give us an indication that okay uh, how many hours of work has been planned by a team you know during the planning and how many hours of uh, uh, you know how many hours has been available like so this 120 hours shows us the capacity 130 per hour shows us the plant right so i mean if it is too much of a variation it will definitely say you know this particular team uh you know they are slightly like over committed or maybe you know they are under committed so they can bring in more work so that kind of an indication uh, uh this kind of indication it will do now other variation that we can try is uh, if we let's say this particular person rajiv he is going to take one day off so what we can do is uh, we can just cancel we can just click on this one and uh, we can say what is the off day let's say he is taking off on 25th for one day now his capacity has been reduced right so if we save this one so this is how we will do uh, in our planning. We will discuss all these details like, okay, these are the four members, how many hours per day they are working actively. And then if any member is taking any uh, any leave. So this person is taking one day leave on 22 that we have mentioned. So if we look, look back, so this particular person's uh, one day has been reduced. Now he is not having five working days. He's having just four days. So that means he's become six into four, 24 hours available for Raji. Let's see how it reflects. So now we can see that you know six hours has been reduced so instead of 120 now it has become 114 and if you look at uh, rajiv so rajiv is also not having 30 he's having 24 right and whatever tasks that have that have been assigned to these people so we can see okay whether the team is under committed or over committed so basically this kind of a data will give enough details to the team uh, during the planning session so they can take a decision and they can really commit to it right so right now it shows, it shows like you know the team has 104 14 hours uh, available uh, in terms of team capacity but i mean the total work that they have planned is around 134 right so that that will give them an indication and if they were planning to kind of like include more items they will say no and similarly at a member wise level we can see like how many hours of task has been planned so let's say for anil we have 22 and we can always check from here like i mean if i go to the filters and if i see okay give me the tasks which have been mentioned to anil uh, so let's say task and uh, okay, I think it's not taking right now. Let me see. Let me just take it off and uh, just see whether we have uh, Okay, I think it's not showing the task. Now, I think there was something wrong, so I have just repressed it. And uh, if I see, uh, give me the Anil Gupta, so 10 hours here, uh, 10 hours remaining here, 10 and 22, so it's showing 22. And if I go back and click on the work details, so it is showing me 22 hours has been planned, and uh, Anil has total 30 hours of work planned. 
so this is how we can kind of like take a decision during the sprint planning by looking at the total available hours uh, with the team and also the available hours uh, uh, for each of the member and the number of uh, hours of tasks uh, he or she is going to work so this will definitely help during the planning so this was all about you know today's video so we learned about you know uh, how we can utilize the capacity how we can add a member uh, how we can add the capacity per hours for each of the member how we can also set the work days off and uh, you know how we can kind of like understand the total hours which have been planned versus the total uh, uh, available hours for the team and also including the each of the team members hours. so thank you so much thank you for your time